Alrighty then, let's get right into what we're covering here tonight, perfecting your trade. Some of this starts from the very, very beginning up here with conquering your FOMO. The, uh, we got a great question that came in from one of our members. They were kind of talking about some things. Um, they're a little bit of a new member, but some of it had directly to do with the FOMO. I know there's a lot of conversation topics around there. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on it and how we overcome it. Again, I'm a very uh, technical one here. Um, how we do those, I've got five ways to do that. First, starts out with the five trades. Think about your ammo count, reading your chart from left to right, pre-fire decision, correlated market filter confluence using the ES. We'll talk about that. And of course, music, theta waves to control your mind and speed is king 45 miles per hour on the vehicle selection you guys will be interested in this one i think you guys know a little bit about that one uh, but the final thing i think this is a pretty big one here too in perfecting your trades is uh, at the very beginning of your day you know starting off on the right foot something about trade day initiation timing that first trade and a couple of things specifically how to do that like starting your timer via the audio box or live start after a sim loss count of two or three are you ready for this here tonight let's do this There it is. Okay, so let's start with the question from one of our members that had been coming in, and let's let's listen in on where this comes from. Hello, Vinny. Hope you are good. I'm reaching out to you looking for an advice about FOMO. Sometimes I enter a trade earlier too late. I get anxious, impatient. Trying to keep up with the market, especially when it's moving fast, makes me jump into trade when it is not even there or forcing it. This behavior doesn't happen all the time, but it happens quite often. Today, I had been listening to audiobook on how to gain self-control and discipline so I can improve my trading skills. Any advice or recommendations that help me get on the right path will be well appreciated. Many thanks in advance. All right, so it's a great question, and you know a lot of people have this. this is, you're not the only one that has this problem, the FOMO thing, jumping in too early or too late. That th There are two sides to this coin, and we're gonna solve a lot of that here with our very first one there on that five trades and thinking about your ammo count. I almost missed and forgot. Don't, there are 24 hours left on that Father's Day offer, so if you guys are interested in getting that 43-inch monitor along with the Better Than Black Friday offer, make sure you come hit me up there in Discord, and I'll get you hooked up. 24 hours left here on that. It expires on Sunday on at midnight with the Father's Day stuff, all right? Um, Forgot about that at the beginning, sorry. And let's so come here to E-mini chat. Let's look at our screenshot. So on our five trade sheet, again, you guys should already have one of these printed out for yourself. If you don't, make sure you go head over to our training stuff to kind of get uh, acquainted with what we're talking about here. But uh, most people here should already know what this is. So trades one, two, three, four, and five there on your session count. Now, one thing about FOMO. So the fear of missing out. Okay, so as you're sitting down at your desk and you should initially first right off the bat be thinking about how the fact that you've got five trades, okay? And again, we've got our physical count right over here. It should be a physical thing that you are mentally thinking about via your five trades. This is gonna help you with your FOMO you're like, look, relax a little bit, okay? Know that you've got five trades, you don't have to fire them off, and you don't have to worry about, well, maybe there's more, maybe there's less. Just think about your five trades. You've got five trades that execute on the day. This is one thing is mentally focus on the fact that you've got five trades and keep track of that and let your let your tracker kind of take that mental thing off of you. That's my tip number one on focusing on the five trades that you've got to go, okay? That's kind of just the start. Now, reading your charts from left to right and making your pre-fire decision. What does that mean? Well, let's come up here to, on my top screen, on the YM. We wanna talk about left to right, okay? Now, um, let's start all the way to the top with your tide and wave. Again, I've got all of my charts kind of split up now where uh, hopefully you guys can uh, catch this. Let me do a divider, a kind of a four quadrants here. And here is RTY, we got ES, NQ, and YM on their tide and their waves, okay? So we got tide wave, tide wave, tide wave, you guys get that, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna start up here in my top left-hand corner of my screen, again, left to right reading, and go, okay, let me look at my highest time frames. Which one of these, just in general, if you've been around the markets now, again, if you're a brand new person, yeah, you may not be able to trust yourself on this, so feel free to ask some of our members like what they look like looking at the higher time frames, what looks like an easier trade setup for the day. Um, you know, pretty much all these are in good setups. None of these are really completely ganky. There was a time where, I'll give an example where you might be really nervous, is on this one right here. See where the ES is all just kind of mangled up in there. This is a place where I would obviously skip on the ES. This is like a mess, okay? Uh, maybe when the RTY was stuck up in here, maybe there, but really all these are looking pretty good. Maybe NASDAQ looking a little nasty here on the higher time frame. but look at this cleared out wave, right? This is this is some beautiful movement and the, the YM is on, you know, a pretty righteous path here. So in my opinion, what I'm currently looking at, if I'm just taking what I'm looking at right now, I can trade any one of these markets now. So is there any that I would not uh, on this list? Actually, no, all these are in play, okay? There's nothing here on this setup. And again, we'll maybe use some examples on another video where I would like, oh, this is totally an easy one to avoid, or here's an obvious one that we want to do because it's got the best layout and setup at the higher time frame. okay? We're starting at the higher time frame, and I'm gonna look across here, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. Really, no big deal, okay, in your phone. And if you get this wrong, again, it's not a big deal either. I wanna, I wanna again, take some of that fear. Again, what I'm trying to do is alleviate the fear part of that FOMO, right? The fear of missing out, and at the very beginning going, well, what if I don't read this right? Oh no, what am I gonna do? Honestly, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna matter that much if you read this wrong, but if there's a big red flag here on one of these high time frames that says, hey, leave this alone, or 
Oh man, this is a beautiful setup. Look at this. Like I, almost right here on the ES on the highest time frame. What does this look like? This looks like a J hook on the highest time frame, right? So if we capture this correctly and we read the J hook properly on the ES, we could catch a huge, huge move on the highest time frame on this one right here, right? Might be an example. But do you know are we playing off of the highest time frame? Absolutely not, right? We're just getting an idea from the highest time frame starting with the left. Okay. So let's say that I'm looking up here and I'm like, okay, well, all these are in place. So what's my default? Again, remember, next step is what is Vinny's default? Okay. Well, I want NQ. Why? Because NQ in general for me is the fastest market and I just like to get in and out, right? At the end of the day, we're just trying to execute trades. Any one of these is pretty much gonna execute the exact same. It's uh, instrument is an instrument, but if you can make uh, more money faster, yeah, you know, that's gonna be better. So my default is I'm gonna think about NQ. But remember on our gears list, if NQ is at the top of the list of our gears, right? And then right underneath that, we're gonna go to the YM, then we're going to RTY, GC, CL, ES, as you move down the list in speed, right? But here's NQ sitting up here at the top of the list. Now, if the market's super duper fast, what do we already know, right? If it's super fast, super high volatility, lots of stuff going on, you just, you know, mark NQ off the list and move down to the next one, because what are we looking for here? We're looking for speed, right? We care about the speed, okay? I mentioned it earlier on, like, what's the proper speed for trading the markets? In my opinion, 45 miles per hour, that's that perfect speed in a car. Like, it's not too fast, it's not too slow. You can drive with the top down without, you know, completely getting your face blown off, etc. You want to get the proper speed, and you'll kind of gauge that if you've been trading the markets for a while. You kind of know what the good speed is, all right? But what you don't want to do is force yourself if you're like, well, I'm only an ES trader. So you're always trading this, and it's, you know, you're, you're dependent on what it's doing that day. And some days it might be fast, some days it might be slow. And again, in general, ES is extremely slow, in my opinion. NASDAQ, in general, is pretty fast, right? But there are some days it goes, you know, fairly slow. Slow, but not really, right? If the market is slow or if NQ is slow, folks, this is a day to just walk away, stay away from the markets, right? But my default is NQ, okay? So my other decisions come from off of my default, where you want to sit down at your desk, no fear, look at the top left, make an engagement of an idea of what you might want to do. And if there, if NQ is not saying, hey, don't trade me, then go with your default, right? So I'm going to go over there and start looking at my NQ chart, okay? Top left first. Now, moving to the right. Remember we said we're reading from left to right? All right, so let's go over here. And now before I'm executing on my far right charts, right, which are what? These are my algo bar charts, right? Now this one used to be range charts, but we've also moved this now. If you have not updated your charts yet, again, just put these in general on the sevens or eights. Again, most of them I'm, I'm running on the eights, but on the YM here, you can see I'm running on the seven algo bars right here. Okay. NQ, always for sure on the eights. ES is going to be on a six. RTY also going to be on a seven. You guys kind of gauge that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we want to read from left to right. So now we've already gotten from the far left, tide wave. Now we're moving to the MACV filter, right? Very simple. In fact, let's say that you skip part one. Okay. If you get to a level where you're just trying to narrow down the simplest way possible to read and engage the markets every day, just coming in, playing a video game, right? Then forget step one. Everything I just said, looking at the tide wave, okay? Just Mark it off your list. If you don't want to read the higher time frame or you're not, you don't feel like you, you're qualified to read the higher time frame or decide on that and you're just going to look at the speed of the markets, that's perfectly fine. Then we're going to start right here. Okay, so everything I previously said, mark it off and now start right here. Left hand chart. This is your MACV filter. This is the filter of all filters right here. Before you press the button, folks, if you want to not blow out your account, just do not trade against this chart. You're gonna write something down. You're gonna take a rule with you tonight. Just with our system, just don't trade against this chart. Okay. Now, I love this setup on the YMY. I wanted to go over this one particularly here tonight because there are. I'm gonna answer some advanced level questions on MACV when we start to get some shifting colors like this one right here. If you're looking at the MACV right here, this chart, what is the current filter direction for this MACV? Is it green? Is it red because it just shifted back? Well, this is tough, right? Because we're still in the gray area, technically, right? So we, I've already told you, it's kind of the warning zone. So when in doubt, okay, right? This this is our this is one of our other rules. We've done this in some other videos, okay? But when in doubt, what am I doing? Checking this color right here. This is technically called the histogram, okay? So if you hear me refer to the histogram, histogram color, the histogram color. So if you're if this is starting to get choppy, what now? First thing I'm doing is looking down here. Now you might want to be thinking. Some of you people have asked. Well, Vinny, if this changes like over here, if this shifted to green right here, so does that mean was this green at this section? What I tell you is, I want you to. This is the time when you squint your eyes, and you ask yourself, what is the color of this section? You got me? In general, like the overall, like even if this had gone green over here on the right, would I be thinking of this as green yet? No. The histogram. The majority of this is red. See how simple that is? All of this just basically go, is it red? Is it green? See how simple that is? This will help you with your FOMO to just go, look, I got no fear. All I do is I look over here. What color is this? This is the direction I'm looking. Bingo, done. See how simple it is? So now when I said, 
Let's uh, let me control Z this at the bottom. Okay, so chart reading. Oops. Chart reading left to right. Okay, and then pre-fire your decision. This part right here, what is pre-firing your decision? Meaning, I have already decided the direction that I am going to fire. All right, so come back up here to our, our trade window. So I am only looking for shorts at this point. You guys get that? Okay, I'm red, cool. What am I doing? I am only looking at the red buttons. Okay, I am selling. Like these, I don't have to worry about, right? So what am I hovering over? I've got my finger hovering over the sell market. Okay, if you're playing bid ass type of thing, you can use the others, but again, keep it simple. We are, we are sell marketing on a setup, you got me? So now all we're doing is waiting for a setup. Simple as that, okay? So number one, five trades, keeping an ammo count. Part two, reading left to right, and you've already decided. You don't have to go, here's what I don't want you to do. Here's a big mistake. When people start reading right to left, we have a problem, okay? <laughs> we're not Jewish, okay? Jewish people read from right to left. You know, we're, this is a US-based thing here. We are reading from left to right, okay? So from left to right, get uh, get your decisions made from here. Then we are applying it over here. What I don't want to see is over here going, ooh, ooh, it's, it's a pink dot. Oh, uh, let me look over here to the left and see if I can take this. Mm-mm, mm-mm. You got me on this? Do not go, ooh, ooh, it's a blue, it's a blue headshot. Oh, uh, let me let me look over here. Should I take this? And then click, okay? So this solves your other problem. You said sometimes you're, uh, you're jumping the gun, getting in early. Sometimes you're getting in late. Well, if you're late, it is because you're probably doing this. Ooh, ooh headshot, uh, let me think about it, and click. No, it's not like that. What it is, is I've already decided here, okay? Pre-fired my decision, decision is made from here. Now I'm looking over here, okay? And I have gone, yep, I am looking for a long, or I'm looking for a short, in this case, easy peasy. I'm looking for shorts only, right? So when this thing showed up, bam, you're pressing the button. Why? Because that is a king timing plus a pink dot with Mac V red and shorts favorable. Of course, I'm gonna take that shot and that is a beautiful setup coming in right there, right? Easy breezy one right there. Um, is there one in here? Let me zoom in here. Um, that is a double PRZ after a king. So technically that could have been a shot as well, which it probably correlates with this right here prior. Again, would have been a great trade setup looking at that. You're deciding from left to right. Hope you guys got that. If you guys got questions around it, hit me up. Let's move on to the next one so we can keep this video um, semi short. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not good at doing short videos, but I'm trying. Okay. Correlated market filter confluence using the ES. Now, there are times when um, one of the other things that you can get to really increase your confidence in what you're doing, if you're still fearful, okay? Another way to conquer that fear is go over there and look at the ES and tell me what the ES says, okay? So let's go up here. That's uh, eight and go up here to screen nine. Okay. So up here on ES, well, what is ES? Is ES red? Yep. ES is red. So I should be able to increase my confidence. Okay. Your confidence has increased because I am correlating that my ES is red, my YM, okay, if I'm trading the YM, is red, awesome, right? Easy, simple way to go, I want something else to confirm for me. So maybe start with the ES and go, what is the ES? All right, ES is red, okay, I'm gonna wait until my correlated market is red, and then when those two are in agreement, great, it's already made my decision. You see how we eliminate the fear by just going, look, we'll just make our decisions, because fear comes from not knowing what you're doing, right? That's at the end of the day, um, you know, even even scary movies, they, they they thrive on the part of you not knowing, the, the jump scare, the uh, like the movie The Ring, you don't know what the thing is, and you're scared of the unknown, right? So let's eliminate the unknowns, make your decision from left to right, that should help. Then the correlated market with ES, let ES tell you what you should be trading to add it. This happened for me on Friday. I had made my decision from ES. ES was already telling me what I wanted to do. I looked for NQ. NQ waited for the NQ to set up my direction. Boom. And that was a huge day because, of course, we had extra volatility with quad witching. So that helped a lot. But I did make that correlated um, play with the ES to help that. It was a huge move and a $10,000 day on a Friday. Pretty awesome. All right. Um, next one on our list, music. Let's come on down to our list. Uh, music. Music and theta waves control your mind. I'm going to do a whole video series on this. But look, number one, very simple turn up the music, okay? If you got FOMO, what I'll tell you, it's really interesting uh, about uh, every sport that's out there, it, there's always noise going on, right? When you wanna get your team pumped up, there's something that happens when there's noise. When there starts to be noise in the crowded room and people are cheering you on, it just gets you, it, it puts your mind in a different state. There's a theta wave, theta wave study on this. We'll talk about that in another video. But another one is, very simple tip here is, crank up the music. If you're a little scared, or you're going like, to crank up the music, it'll boost that confidence in what you're about to do. It's a little mental trick on that one. Okay, speed is king, 45 miles per hour. We kind of already hit on this one, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but choosing which instrument you're going to be trading based on speed, not because, ooh, I like YM, or ooh, I like RTY, or ooh, I like ES. We are agnostic to what it is. We are here to make money. This is not about here to go, oh, I like this or I like that. What is in play at the moment, at the time? Speed is king. Choose your selection based on the speed 
um, of the market. And we'll talk more about that in a separate video because I need to keep this one short. I've got one minute left. Let's go. Trade initiation, timing your first trade. Okay. There's another part that comes into perfecting your trades at the very beginning of the day. This also plays into FOMO in my opinion. So your day, your trade initiation. Now you should be sitting down at your desk at your optimal time. Okay. For some people that's super early morning. Some people it's in the afternoon. Some people it's midday. You have to start there. Okay. But you need to be feeling good. You need to be ready and sitting at your desk. That's fantastic. But does that mean that the market's going to be ready every time that you're ready? Not necessarily. So one of my little tips here on this is I got two, two of them right here. Number one is, you know, that I first say that you've got to start a timer 60 to 90 minutes for your session, right? Well, you could just sit down at your desk and just immediately start that boom and go, or here's what I'll encourage you to do. Sit back, sit at your desk, be comfortable. The FOMO and the fear kind of comes from, Oh, okay. I gotta, uh, I gotta, I gotta start my timer. Okay. I gotta, mm, now I gotta start looking. Okay. Maybe here's what, here's my suggestion. Don't start your timer until the audio box tells you to. What does that mean? So if you're over here in our audio box, in the audio box room, you're in the e-mini trade floor, and all of a sudden, um, well, first it's quiet, right? If it's quiet, okay, maybe don't start your timer. Maybe wait around until all of a sudden you start to hear some activity. Now you may be sitting around for 10, 20, 30 minutes. Now, if you're in at the open, of course, obviously the open is gonna be the open, it's gonna be quick and fast, but you know what I'm saying? Like let's say you're sitting down at, I don't know, 11.30 in the afternoon, lunchtime, you're on your lunch break uh, from your job and you're sitting down at your at your workstation and you're like, okay, I'm gonna take some trades here at lunch. Well, I haven't seen anything yet, I've got some time. Well, I don't hear anything, let me wait. So all of a sudden you start to hear when that drilling starts to go. Now the market is waking up. Why don't you start your timer right then? Okay. That is, I don't know what tip number that is for us. That's number six. And here comes number seven, live start after a sim loss count of two or three. Okay. So just sit down at your desk, start your timer like you normally would. And then first trade sim. Okay. And I don't, I don't care. Look, you use this could be good or bad for you, but I have, I've suggested this is kind of a mental hack for people to go over here and uh, first trade sim. So come up here to my, uh, chop chart here on YM. So maybe set this one up here to SIM. Okay. Set your top one up here to SIM. Trade, trade, trade off of SIM. And then, you know, set this one to live. Okay. To your live account. And then when you, when you go to execute at the end, just go, okay. So uh, I've had two or three losers. Now I start live. Now this, ha this has to do with a lot of things. This will first of all go, okay, I've kind of got some losses out of my system. I kind of feel out the market. I've got uh, a lot of things. This is going to help with FOMO as well as perfecting your trades. You will get basically a, almost a per perfect trade after you've seen a couple losers because you'll start to realize, ooh, I would have gotten kind of caught on that. But now all of a sudden you're like, bam, I, you get a better read on the market and you go live. So this is my, my seventh tip here on it. And this can apply to anybody, really algo box or otherwise. Start your live after you've taken two or three losses in SIM, then start your live. And you may even want to start your timer at that moment. Okay. So maybe don't count your SIM time. Although I don't want you to, sometimes your mental cycles, be careful of sitting too long at your desk. Okay. You've got to have those breaks. It's important. Again, the, the, the human mind is capable of the maximum levels of concentration for 60 to 90 minutes. After that, you cannot keep up that same level of concentration that you can do in a short one hour to 90 minute session. Okay. So be careful of that. But after two or three losers, boom, flip to live, ready and go. That is my tip number seven. And of course, at the very end, don't forget 24 hours left on that Father's Day offer. I want to send you guys a 43 inch monitor. I got uh, three and we got one on the way. If I can come down to my screen, which is this one. Still getting used to the new setup here. Uh, but I am super excited about um, my new little one. And we are, we got another little one kind of be arriving in November. Well, my screen keeps doing that. There we go. There's that Father's Day offer. It was supposed to come in cool, but that uh, didn't work for me. But there it is. Don't forget about that one. I'm going to send you guys a 43 inch monitor. So a big old beast that will fit four of those instruments on your charts. And of course, all that other stuff. If you guys got questions, come hook it up in the Discord chat and I will catch you guys on the flip side for me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Monspot, Curtis G, and the rest of the gang. Let's send out that big town. See ya!